Dear Blair White, a kind message from a queer elder. Hey Blair, it's Prince of Queens, and this is my third in what might be kind of a series where I sit around talking to YouTubers that I am a decent amount older than, that happen to be LGBT or say that they're LGBT. Everybody always loves to say that I'm not old enough to be giving advice every time I do these, and yes, mid to late 30s isn't really all that old, even in queer years, but at the same time, it's certainly old enough for people to call me an old queen as a legitimate insult that they think might actually hurt my feelings. My previous videos of the like were towards Milo Stewart, who I honestly have always felt bad for as I assume that person probably is dealing with issues that should be worked out in a therapeutic setting, and the other one was about ContraPoints, who I honestly just can't stand as a video maker and have nothing good to say about them besides nice lighting. However, Blair, I'm breaking the formula with you because, surprise surprise, I actually like you, and this video isn't going to be some snooty thing where I tell you to go get a therapist or intellectually read you to filth and tell you that you don't have any good ideas and that I don't think you are honest with your audience. Because I actually do think that you're honest, which is why I feel compelled to make this video. Now, I'm not sure how well you remember me, but we know each other. We're actually still friends on Facebook, and you hosted the first live stream that I ever went on, in which I even showed my face back in January of 2016 before I even had a channel. That was also the first time that I met Casey Dennison, who you are still friends with on Facebook, and who has appeared on numerous live streams of mine, where I have historically referred to him as my token young Republican friend. Theron Meyer was also on that live stream of yours. She became vehemently defensive when I told her that I couldn't easily associate myself with MRAs due to the ways in which my extended social circle had already shown themselves to freak out over the smallest advocation for male issues, which is funny because now I am an MRA and she's... <laughs> On that stream of yours, I made the prediction that Hillary Clinton would steal the nomination from Sanders and then lose the general election to Trump, which you can go back and watch if you have it privated. Casey clearly remembers me saying that, so I have a witness. Now, I'm not reminding you of this as some sort of weird effort to act like we are supposed to be long-lost besties, because now that you're thinking about me for probably the first time in a long while, if you even connect my channel with my actual real-life name, which maybe you don't anyway, you probably are merely thinking to yourself, Okay, dude, spit it out. What's the point? Well, the point is that I was there and following you on YouTube basically from the beginning, and even had a slight window into your personal life by way of being your personal friend on Facebook and chatting a few times in private. However, all you probably remember about me is that I hate Cat Black and that I gave you some unsolicited advice once or twice, though I'll get back to that advice in a bit. Honestly, when I watched your stream from a few days ago where you talked about why you quit Twitter, I was reminded of this clip from the late 90s of a singer that you might be just a bit too young to remember well, Fiona Apple, when she won some award for some MTV ceremony or another. So what I want to say is, um, everybody out there that's watching, everybody that's watching this world, this world is bull and you shouldn't model your life. Wait a second. You shouldn't model your life about what you think that we think is cool and what we're wearing and what we're saying and everything. Go with yourself. Go with yourself. At the time that footage aired, I definitely thought to myself, holy crap, that was awesome. Being that I've always had that fascination with dramatic female meltdown type moments so common with gay men, and also because I was a teenager in the 90s, which means that I was programmed to hate everything mainstream and thus didn't want Fiona to get comfortable as some sort of sellout. However, way back then, I didn't understand what on earth she was actually talking about. But maybe you follow it perfectly well, being that in a lot of ways, you're actually in a very similar position to her. She was famous, for sure, but not super famous. 
I'm sure she got recognized occasionally, but she was no Madonna or Janet Jackson. And after that award, her next album was way more avant-garde. I bet if one were to go back and really do their best to follow Fiona's career, they might find a fair amount of similarities to what you've been going through. You see, the album that made her successful was produced to sound like some sort of R&B that dominated mainstream radio and MTV during the mid to late 90s. But ultimately, as you can hear from her next album, it wasn't really her and she changed a lot. A similar thing happened to the artist Pink, who later ended up writing about her experiences as a musician in LA that was told by a label that she could sacrifice her honesty to get famous. And now, a similar thing seems to be happening to you. But unlike so many, and maybe a bit more like Fiona and Pink, you're at least admitting that it's happening, and that you don't like it. From afar, I really did see all of this happen from my computer screen, as I really did pay close attention to your evolution, as I knew it was all bound to happen and you were going to blow up. I probably told you that right from the beginning, if you remember. First, I watched your original videos, and I thought that they were great. Then I watched you talk to people like Naked Ape one week, and then people like Alex Jones the next, and then eventually you came back around and talked to Steven Crowder, who actively makes videos where he mocks transgenderism, like in the Schoolhouse Rock parody video about the bill that wants to be Jill. Obviously, I was thinking to myself the whole time, Oh boy, her career is going to go in all sorts of crazy directions, but Blair has risen her hand and chose to go in all of those directions. So I suppose I'll grab popcorn? Thus, even though I have a direct line with you on Facebook, I have never said anything about your choices until this moment, because what would you have said a year and a half ago if I told you, you'll regret some of your videos and appearances? I mean, I might have slightly criticized a few things, but, you know, I wasn't going to tell you who to talk to. <laughs> I knew perfectly well that you were going to make your own decisions, and if you made some mistakes, I knew it was most important for you to make those mistakes for yourself. Even if you would listen to me, which you probably wouldn't, so that you really know why you shouldn't make them again. Like the appearance on the Rubin Report with Candace Owens, which the entire internet can agree wasn't a good idea. That said, I want you to rest assured that I've made these same types of mistakes myself, and that I'm not just judging you from afar as some random aging gay guy that randomly appointed myself to be some sort of person who knows everything because reasons. No, although it was fortunate that I never got as famous as you at a young age because I would have seriously blew it, I've had my brushes with being at least a local celebrity that people did, in fact, not uncommonly recognize from shows that I had done in both music and theater type stuff. And that went on for numerous years. You see, as you've probably learned by now, when you're young and nobody really pays attention to you, it's easy to envy the people that everybody wants to talk to at any social gathering or convention. But when you spend over a year being one of those people that everybody recognizes, it ends up getting a bit old in more ways than you can ever explain to anybody who hasn't experienced it. One thing that I am sure that you have to have noticed by now is the ways in which people who are attempting to do the same thing as you are, but are maybe getting less attention, have a tendency to get really insecure that you stopped liking them, merely by virtue of the fact that you've been too busy to talk to them in a while, or something similar to that. I remember things like this. I can't count all of the different people that I would meet at some sort of after party after a club or show, and these people would tell me something like, Last time I saw you, you weren't very nice to me. I thought you didn't like me. And I was just thinking to myself, I don't even remember meeting you before. I didn't even form an opinion. Thus, I should inform you that in relation to that type of thing, People who we know in common have asked me questions like, Are you still friends with Blair Prince? And I tell them, No, not really. 
but it's not like we were ever really friends. I was on one live stream with her, and we've chatted on Facebook a few times, but I doubt she considers me a friend, and it's been a long while. I don't have anything against her, though. Still, some people seem to want to feel like maybe I secretly don't like you, or maybe that I secretly want to be your good friend, when, really, I haven't given it a whole bunch of thought, because as an early subscriber, I got bored with your content during your response video phase. However, I'll admit that I did start becoming more interested when you started sharing personal stories like the sex work one. That said, I found it very eye-opening and somewhat moving to hear that you didn't actually really want to make that video where you mocked that Alok person. Now, don't feel bad about doing it necessarily because I've used photos of that person in my videos where I talk about non-binary people, and maybe I've used that person's photos in some where I call that person a trans trender. I can't remember each and every time I've used their photos, but suffice it to say that this is not a hard person to make fun of. However, one thing I never did, which people can verify, is make an actual video where I actively mocked this person's appearance. And I'm pretty sure I've mostly avoided that entirely. And if you remember me, you'll remember very clearly that I advised you very early on that you shouldn't mock people's appearances. And as I recall, you took that advice at the time. But like you said, it seemed after a while like the audience wanted you to be mean and then eventually you went back to doing what the audience wanted. It's strange that way, how audiences work. Often, when it comes to commentary, they want somebody with the nerve to say things that they are afraid to say, and maybe they'll show people your videos in private or give it a thumbs up, but then they'll turn around and deny that they agree with it in a public setting if it goes against the grain of the popular politically correct ethos of the times. In that way, I think a large portion of your audience, and maybe some of the people you have appeared as a guest with, have kind of used you. They wanted you to say certain things to fit their political narrative. We all saw you avoid having words put into your mouth as best you could. And now, after they kind of tried to put words into your mouth and you're unwilling to do it, you've finally gotten fed up enough to quit Twitter and vent about it. And I guess maybe a few doors have closed. This is not to say that I'm pessimistic about your career. Things could be far worse, of course. You could be like Theron Meyer, who's now actively trying to basically pretend that she didn't become semi-famous for saying all of those things that she initially said, and pretends that she disagrees with everything she used to say without giving any sort of good reason about why like as if most of the world will ever trust her again after doing a complete 180 like that. Regarding Theron Meyer, I noticed that you didn't show up to talk to her and ContraPoints in Vancouver, and if my suspicions are correct, that was a good move on your part, because from the looks of how that talk ended up going down between the two of them, you would have probably been ambushed. But oh well, I've spoken enough about Theron on my channel, and she bores me entirely. Still, you're in a strange spot, because the expiration date on the token young, attractive, confident, and honest transgender woman has probably already reached its limit, at least in terms of having an audience for largely just coming out and stating the obvious truths that everybody is scared to say, which is how you became well known. Not to say that you weren't funny and intelligent, but it was mostly that. But you see, beyond that, I'm with Shane Dawson when he says that he sees a lot in you. And what I imagine he really sees in you is not just intelligence, but like I said, honesty. And honesty is a lot harder to find than people really think, but I'm starting to think that maybe you've really got it. And if you really are just an actress, I'm, 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 I'm really mad. <laughs> I'm really mad that you tricked me. It's not simply that you were honest with your audience about telling your father that you hated him right before he died. That was a really big thing to admit. But it goes even further than that. You're so honest that you can publicly grapple with your own honesty in a live stream, wondering if you are as honest as you wish that you were, in real time. 
And there's a severely limited amount of people that will ever say such things in such ways. Because, truthfully, the greatest lies we ever tell, we tell to ourselves. And so, where does this leave you? Well, it's hard to say. Both Pink and Fiona Apple continued to be adored by their fans years after their initial pop hits, though the initial splash into the pond was probably a lot bigger than the ripples their later work made. Though maybe that's fine. For them, at least. Personally, I have tons to talk about, so I can drop a few suggestions to you. I still talk about TERFs, and I hope that you watch my videos about both them in general, and the time a few months ago where I proved that Magdalen Burns is just a flat-out liar, because she totally is, and I'm sure you know that about her by now. More so, one of the things that's been keeping me going on this platform has been a continued interest in the LGBT community, and in particular, maybe how they spend their money and organize nonprofits and stuff, which we're just starting to explore in my little friend group on my live streaming channel, The Gay Triarchy. Uh, you should actually know that my friends just made a video called Pink Dollars at Work that attempts to expose corruption in nonprofits. Ultimately, I don't know what you are interested in, and it would be foolish to tell you what to make videos about, but I can assure you that there's still plenty of material for you out there. If you bother to really search through YouTube, the blogs, then follow the links to the studies that they reference, follow the money, and do all that internet legwork. You're a smart girl. I trust that you'll figure things out. And more than that, you're honest. So I'm interested to hear about what you find when you do. And of course, if you do want to talk, you can hit me up on Facebook or an email if you forget who I actually am. That's all.